in today's video. Chael Sonnen believes Francis Ngannou fumbled the bag. Demetrius Johnson has a piece of advice for Francis Ngannou. Michael Bisping tells what Justin Gaethje should do next. And two big lightweight fights announced. Before we delve into today's stories, we ask for your support on our content by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications. We found out that more than 95% of our viewers are not subscribed. Thank you. Chael Sonnen believes Francis Ngannou fumbled the bag. In a recent boxing super fight, Francis Ngannou squared off against Tyson Fury, and the Brit won by a razor close decision. Notably, Ngannou managed to drop the legendary Gypsy King in the third round, leaving many fans feeling that he might have done enough to secure the win. Uh, I tell you what, Ngannou's the real deal. However, the Predator failed to secure a victory, although he did come out of the bout with the largest payday of his career, a well-deserved recognition of his achievements nonetheless. With Ngannou newfound success, fans are speculating about his next move and some are even suggesting that his decision to part ways with the UFC was a wise one. But according to Chael Sonnen, that isn't entirely the case. Just short of, since he's been in there last, I want to praise Francis today, but I do want the story told correctly. I think that he beat Fury. I think that he exceeded expectations. I think that he deserves a lot of credit. But I've already seen the story mistold, that he played this one and didn't fumble the bag. Well, if the bag is a bag full of money, yes, he did. He absolutely, to make believe that $10 million is somehow significantly more than he would have got on his pay-per-view participation alone against John Jones is incorrect. Not to mention the two years that he sat equals six fights. Let's bring it back and call it five. It's like making it really easy. Let's call it four fights. His four fights would have equaled more than 10 million had he promoted them. I mean, you, you gotta really understand this. It's not the way that people keep saying that it is. I don't know what he's got in MMA. I don't know who is out there for him. I know the two leading candidates to be his next MMA opponent are between Junior Dos Santos and Fabiano. Do you agree with Uncle Chael's mats? And what do you think about the judge's decision? Did Ngannou win that fight? Moving on, Demetrius Johnson has a piece of advice for Francis Ngannou. The flyweight GOAT was very impressed with Ngannou's performance against Fury, and he thinks the Cameroonian should never step back in an MMA cage again. All right, what's next for Francis? I don't think I want to see Francis do mixed martial arts. I know that might be hard to hear, but I don't see why PFL cannot do a boxing. Why not PFL do boxing? We, you have one of the biggest stars in boxing right now, Francis, who just beat the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Tyson, Tyson Fury. I don't want to see Francis box. I don't want to see him do mixed martial arts. I want to see him box. We've seen him do mixed martial arts. He's, he's beaten the best, best of the world in mixed martial arts. He's been a world champion. There's nothing left for him to do in that sport. I want to see him do boxing. He's going to make big money in boxing. And he can fight Anthony Joshua. He can fight Deontay Wilder. The, list, the, the gates have just opened up. So everybody out there who said that Francis fumbled the bag, you guys are wrong. You guys fumbled your words. You guys fumbled your thought. Who should Francis Ngannou fight next? Michael Bisping tells what Justin Gaethje should do next. Gaethje has expressed his willingness to bide his time for a title shot, especially if the UFC decides to reschedule the title rematch between lightweight champion Islam Makachev and Charles Oliveira. However, with Max Holloway openly challenging Gaethje, Bisping believes the highlight should carefully consider the alternative to avoid fading into obscurity. To make his point, Bisping used the example of number one middleweight contender Trikas Duplessis, who is in danger of being leapfrogged by Hamzat Himaev. So, but as we said, just engage it. Should he fight? I think he should. I think he should keep the ball rolling. I mean, if you look at the t uh, the run of Justin Gagey, I mean, the man's incredible. I'm not knocking his record, far from it. If you look here at the wins that he had, of course, he's got that one over Dustin Poirier. Before that, he beat Fazeev. Ridiculous wins. So if you look at that, he's won three out of his last five. Now, granted, the people he's fighting are all superstars of the sport, but you've got to stay busy. You've got to keep that, the momentum. You've got to stay active in the minds of the fans and the UFC. 
And again, I'll just point to Dricus Duplessis. Duplessis deserves a title fight soon, okay? Now, granted, Hamzat came in. Hamzat's got a massive following and he just beat Kamaru Usman. And Justin Gagey is a massive fan favourite. So he's got some time, but he's still in the prime. He's in the peak of his popularity and his earning powers. And at 34 as a lightweight, what's he got? Two, three years left. So I wouldn't advise sitting around. Do you agree with Michael Bisping? Two big lightweight fights announced. Yep, the UFC is making its return to Austin, Texas, with a UFC Fight Night event set for December 2nd at the Moody Center. This card will be headlined by two five-round lightweight battles. In the main event, Benil Dariush will aim to bounce back after his TKO loss to Charles Oliveira in June, which ended his impressive seven-fight winning streak. He'll face Armand Surukian, who is coming off a third-round TKO victory against Joaquim Silva in June. In the co-main event, Dan Hooker will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bobby Green. Both fighters are on two fight winning streaks with Hooker securing wins against Claudio Pugliez and Jalen Turner, while Green dispatching Tony Ferguson and Grant Dawson in quick succession. The event marks the UFC's return to Austin after a June 2022 card featuring Josh Emmett versus Calvin Catter. Who do you think will win and what fight excites you the most? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you want to stay in the loop with all the latest developments in the worlds of MMA and boxing, make sure to hit the subscribe button and enable notifications. Thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you in our next video.